I am here to show you guys how to make a solid cube that we will turn into a box. So the things you are going to need today are slip, a card or a rib, a wood tool, some sort of scratch tool, and a bevel cutter. We will be using the small side. You will also need to have seven four by four slabs, which should have sat overnight or at least a day. The first step we are going to do is take four of your slabs. Going to do what is called a bevel cut on the right and left side of each of these walls. Now a bevel cut is an angled cut, so we will be removing the right and left corner of all the walls so that they can fit together. So if we try to sit these together right now, you can see that there's a gap, or if I stack them, I'll have a shorter wall and a longer wall. So I wanna make these corners touch together. The way that you are going to do this is you are going to take your slab and you are going to line up the flat part of the bevel tool next to the edge of the wall, keep it flat on the table, and you're gonna come straight towards your belly button. Now I like to rotate my slab and then I will cut off the opposite side. So I have beveled the right and left side. I'm also gonna keep these little scrap pieces in a Ziploc bag or in wet paper towel to use for later. So here's one, I'm gonna repeat with step, this step with all three slabs. Okay, now that I've beveled all four of these slabs, I'm gonna take one more. And this is going to be my floor for my box. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna score all around the circumference of the square so that they are prepped for my walls. When I score, I wanna make sure that I'm not doing light little cuts. You don't want this. That's not enough of a scoring. We would need to make sure that you have a rough surface with clay crumbs. You don't want to have something smooth. So again, this is not scoring. This is not scoring. We wanna make sure there's something the clay can grip into when we sit them together or squish them together. My next step is I'm gonna take one of my walls. I'm going to score the right side the left side and the bottom. Now I'm gonna take some slip, put it on the bottom part of my wall. Now this is gonna go right on top of the slab, so I'm gonna sit it down. I wanna make sure that it's lined up, it's not hanging off the edge. I'm gonna push down and rock right and left. So my corners are still on my slab it's not hanging over, I'm in place. So that's what I want. I'm gonna take wall two and I'm gonna repeat the same scoring steps. I'm gonna score the right side, score the left side, and the bottom. Now this, is going to go onto this other wall. So wall two is gonna go onto wall one. So I wanna make sure I put slip on every part of clay where it is touching. So slip on the bottom. I'm doing a pretty generous amount of slip because when I squish these walls together and I squish it onto the floor, I wanna see a little bit of the slip kind of ooze out the side. So I'm gonna make sure this is lined up. Gently press that corner together, rock it right and left, right, left. And you can see hopefully on the inside where the slip is kind of oozing out the bottom. Now I'm gonna gently take my fingertips and I'm gonna press these corners together so they are firmly attached. So I am on my wall here, here, and here. Now what I wanna do next is I wanna get rid of this seam and this seam. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to rake the outside or score these outside ledges together. And you can see the slip is there, so I can just blend that in. 
So I'll score that side and I'll score this side. Now I'm not gonna score this corner because I want to keep it sharp. So what I'm actually going to do is sit this up and then I'm gonna drag my card over the sides until I get a nice sharp corner. Now the trick to keeping this clean is keeping your tool clean. So as long as you're wiping this off, it'll stay clean. I'm also gonna use this credit card or rib to smooth out my score marks. So I'll get rid of those and it gets rid of any extra little boogers that are kind of hanging on the side. And I wanna do that on the outside of both walls. Now, normally I do this where my box is just sitting this way so my slabs don't warp, but I wanted to make sure you could see. So this is really how I do this. I just keep the platform on the table and I just swipe up and down. Now the next spot I want to get is inside. You can see there's like these gaps um, in the walls. That's where the corners were. And then there's a slip. I wanna make sure that those are filled. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just score it a little bit. So I'm taking some of those surfaces and locking them together. I'm also roughing the surface because I'm gonna take a tiny coil. So these little pieces that we kept on the side from when we beveled the walls, I'm gonna roll those so they're nice and thin get some of this gunk out of my wing. I want to roll these so they're nice and thin like a little spaghetti noodle. So you can see it like next to my pinky. It's it's not even not even half of my pinky. So it's a tiny little coil. Now I'm going to take that coil and I'm going to press it into those corners. And I want to do that both on the floor. So I'm going to go all the way Now this little piece isn't long enough, so I need another coil. And I'm gonna go in the vertical part too. And I actually take this little vertical part and press it in the top. So the coils are in, but I wanna make sure I blend them. So I wanna make sure those are smoothed into the wall. There's no gap. We don't actually see the coil. So we don't see any of the seams or the connecting joints. Now, every time I press on the wall, cause they're still a little soft, I wanna make sure that my support hand or my non-dominant hand is on the outside to try and keep my walls as straight as possible. Now, if you notice, I'm not using any water. We are trying to keep our slabs leather hard so that they don't get flimsy or start to concave and roll in on themselves. So no water right now. The trick is keeping your tools clean and your fingers clean, and that will minimize the amount of clay crumbs that you have in your working process. All right, now that I have wall one and two up, I'm going to do wall three and four, and I'm gonna repeat those same steps of scoring, slipping, and bonding together. So right side, left side, bottom.
Okay, now that I have a box with an open top, I want to close it. So the way that I close it is I'm gonna take my last remaining slab and it's gonna go on top. I wanna make sure I score all the way around the edge just like I did the base and all the way around the edge here. Again, make sure that you are scoring this really well assertively. We wanna make sure there's clay crumbs, that you cannot define each individual mark so that the clay can lock together. This is probably the most common mistake with this assignment is just not scoring enough. It's not that we're skipping scoring, it's that we're not scoring enough. So make sure you score assertively. And then I am going to place slip all the way around just like I did before. So everywhere where the walls are touching, I wanna make sure there's a generous amount of slip. Now, instead of pressing down with my fingers and making a finger indent, this is where I'm gonna use a clean card again and I'm just going to go around all the edges. I'm gonna push down and it's just a swipe. So I'm gonna do this multiple times. I'm gonna avoid pushing the middle too much I don't want to risk it concaving so sinking in to the middle I want to try and keep this as flat as possible now just like we did on the base we want to get rid of the seam that is all the way around our box currently so I am going to rake that surface or score over the top of this piece and my walls and then I will smooth and compress with a credit card again I am not using any water for this process. This is all pressure, clean tools, and the little bit of slip that I have. I'm also not painting slip anywhere. Okay, so now I'm gonna score all the way around. So there we have it. We have a cube where we cannot see any of the seams. We are gonna let this sit up overnight in a Ziploc bag with no wet paper towel. And next class, we will add our feet and we will cut a line so that we can turn this into a box.